Total seizures of cultivated cannabis plants fell an estimated 35% between the years 2010 and 2011, according to statistics provided by the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration and published by the Source Book of Criminal Justice Statistics. Data for the year 2011 indicates that some 6.7 million cannabis plants were eradicated nationwide under the DEA's Domestic Cannabis Eradication Suppression Program. This figure represents the lowest total of cultivated plants eradicated since 2006 and is a 35% decrease from 2010 when DEA reported eradicating some 10.3 million marijuana plants. The year-to-year -year drop was largely a result of a decline in the total number of plants eradicated in California. In 2010, the DEA reported eradicating some 7.4 million plants in California. That number fell to just under 4 million plants in 2011. Overall, approximately 60% of all the marijuana plants eradicated in the United States in 2011 were from California plots. The DEA further reported having seized over $11 million in assets associated with eradication efforts in California. Nationwide, the agency reported seizing over $42 million in assets associated with its domestic cannabis eradication and suppression program. According to a July 2012 Government Accountability Office report, the Justice Department's asset forfeiture fund under President Barack Obama is the largest on record, having grown from $500 million in 2003 to $1.8 billion in 2011. According to the GAO, the fund paid out approximately $79 million to California law enforcement agencies, the most in the nation, for their participation in federal raids and seizures. In recent months, the Justice Department has targeted numerous properties in California for civil asset forfeiture, including Harborside Health Center, the largest and most prominent medical marijuana dispensary in the state. Regulating cannabis access would provide patients with an effective treatment for chronic pain and likely reduce morbidity associated with the use of prescription opiates and other pharmaceuticals, according to a review published in the Journal of Psychoactive Drugs. A researcher with the Center for Addictions Research of British Columbia reports that cannabis may be useful in the treatment of chronic pain as well as certain substance abuse disorders and that it poses fewer risks to health than many conventional alternatives. He writes, When used in conjunction with opiates, cannabinoids lead to a greater cumulative relief of pain resulting in a reduction in the use of opiates and associated side effects by patients in a clinical setting. Additionally, cannabinoids can prevent the development of tolerance to and withdrawal from opiates. Novel research suggests that cannabis may be useful in the treatment of problematic substance use. These findings suggest that increasing safe access to medical cannabis may reduce the personal and social harms associated with addiction, particularly in relation to the growing problematic use of pharmaceutical opiates. The author continues, Since both the potential harms of pharmaceutical opiates and the relative safety of cannabis are well established, research on the substitution effect suggests the cannabis may be effective in reducing the use and dependence of other substances of abuse, such as illicit opiates, stimulants, and alcohol. As such, there is reason to believe that a strategy aiming to maximize the therapeutic potential benefits of both cannabis and pharmaceutical cannabinoids by expanding their availability and use could potentially lead to a reduction in the prescription use of opiates, as well as other potentially dangerous pharmaceutical analgesics, illicit and illicit substances, and thus a reduction in associated harms. The author concludes, despite a lack of regulatory oversight by federal governments in North America, community-based medical cannabis dispensaries have proven successful at supplying patients with a safe source of cannabis within an environment conducive to healing, and may be reducing the problematic use of pharmaceutical opiates and other potentially harmful substances in their communities. Between the years 1999 and 2007, over 65,000 people died from unintentional opioid analgesic overdose. That's it for This Week in Weed. Be sure to check back every Thursday for the latest stories in marijuana law reform.